All right, it's Saturday morning and you can see that there are some people already lined up. We are here for a rummage sale. So the mission here is to get as much jewelry as we possibly can based on Mrs. Primetime scoping it out yesterday. <laughs> we don't know how much is left, but it's also a bag sale today. So put as much in the bag as you can for just $3. Let's see what we can find. So we're in, grab the bag. This gives you a sense of the size of the place. And Mrs. Primetime, she didn't waste any time. She just started loading up with as much jewelry as she could get. Uh, that includes all the jewelry that was on this stand as well. So there was a lot that was taken the day before, but she was still happy with uh, being able to get all this. Uh, remember, just three bucks a bag. That's the most I think we've ever seen of Mrs. Primetime together in one shot. We think about that, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she pretty much wiped out that uh, table. Uh, just left a little bit there. And uh, then I grabbed this Holy Bible that has a handle on it. Why does it have a handle on it? Well, it's not a book. If you open it up, look at that. Look at all these cassettes. Don't pass up cassette sets like this because there are still people who use cassettes and uh, they'll still uh, buy things like this. Now, it's not a huge market, but they do sell. So uh, pick that up and put it in my bag. So we, we each had our own bag. Uh, one of these or something like it is sold for 25 bucks. And right now the cheapest available is $35. So maybe I could get like low 30s, mid 30s for it. All right, so the next item I found was this vintage beanery coffee grinder by Melita. You can just tell it's vintage from the look and feel. I uh, needed a place to plug it in, though, to test it, see if it worked. Now, when you plug it in, it doesn't automatically spin for safety reasons. There's no switch or anything. So what you got to do here is press it down from the top like this. So yeah, that's all there is to it. And uh, that's gonna be a cool piece for someone. Now, uh, comps wise, there is one that has sold recently for $25, but it's a new version of it, as you could see here. So I'm not sure, let me know in the comments, you think uh, the one I have will sell for more than that uh, or right around the same price. Usually it goes for a little more. All right, so now we're in the book room. So I'll go over to this little green basket here and pull out three Dr. Seuss books. I showed in the prior video when I was at the flea market that I picked up some Dr. Seuss books. And that's what I do with certain titles is that I just amass them across various sales that I go to, uh, source them low, and then sell them all together for one high price. So that's a strategy to try using. I do the same thing with Pokemon books. As you could see here, I do them with Diary to Wimpy Kid, uh, Dork Diaries. There's lots of titles you could do this with. I just grabbed all of them. I normally wouldn't have grabbed that foot book that had the damage on it, but I just grabbed them all at once there. Uh, this one here is the E.T. toy. Any iconic 80s characters like this in toy form, I tend to pick up. And I've talked before about the Welch's glasses and jars. They often have iconic characters. They come in sets uh, usually. So this is the Curious George one. Uh, so I uh, picked this one up. It's from a set of six, but you can mix and match them. All right, so we're at another table here. Always check out remotes. That one doesn't happen to be worth anything. Uh, but let me show you something that tends to get left behind, as it did here, but does have value. These are sun visors. Back in the day, everybody had these on their cars in like the 90s and uh, maybe even the early 2000s. But uh, now, uh, not many people use them anymore. Uh, these are leftover ones, new old stock. Uh, the first one I really liked because it had what looked like the World Trade Center on there, Twin Towers, although the drawing wasn't as great as I'd like it to be. Uh, and then the other one did not have as many fancy features. So that's why I priced this one here at 75 bucks. It's in my eBay store. And the other one I have listed for $40. I've sold these before and the sun visors do well. All right, then I undid a throw blanket that was all bunched up, and I laid it out on the floor here. As you could see, it's a nice American flag one. 
uh, has the nice fringed edges on it, which is a great selling point. People love these all year round, especially when it's getting cooler out. And I love using them to my advantage when I'm at sales and I have items that I've got to be real careful with, you know, breakables, things like that. So I will just nestle the items, there we go with that word again, uh, into the throw blanket and give it a little space. And that protects them as I'm going along. So all right, now I picked this one up, not because of any comps, but because I believe in what it says. I didn't even look this up, but I firmly follow this philosophy. As you know on my channel, I could be pretty silly sometimes. I like to have fun. Uh, and I'm not going to be bound by what my numerical age is. I don't care about that, you know? So um, you can't be serious constantly. So if this one sells, it sells. If not, I don't mind keeping it and displaying it somewhere. All right. Now I might have messed up in the prior video calling Falls Graph Fetzel Graph, but I did take French. And so I do know that this is Olé de Olive. That is French for olive oil. I love that. I love those bright red and yellow colors. I don't need to check comps for something like that because I just know it's going to sell based on experience. Uh, same thing with this. It's pretty cool. This Williamsburg, uh, Virginia ceramic shoe made in Japan. Uh, always look for made in Japan things. Uh, that's my bag on the bottom on the floor. And this is Mrs. Primetime's here. I'm not even going to have a chance to go through everything that she got. It's just amazing. Now, this is something we talked about during my secret tipathon event. If you didn't see it, I'll link to it up top, uh, which was making sure you're looking for these uh, vintage uh, discontinued paper cups, especially ones with characters on them. Uh, they're great. Uh, you have lots of options with them. You could sell them in small little bunches like this. Uh, this is obviously a Looney Tune set here. Uh, or you could sell them all as one lot. If it has the box, that does help. And, uh, you know, you have all sorts of options. Don't worry if the box is open. That doesn't matter. Of course, if it was sealed and it was full, uh, then they'd sell for more. Uh, but, you know, someone who had these when they were younger and, you know, remembered them and just, you know, uh, sees them again, you're selling them back those memories. Uh, then I found uh, one last item here, which is this cool... Uh, uh, faux fruit. I did a video on that too. And uh, that was it. So as you can see here, the car is totally loaded up $6 for all that stuff. We did really, really well. All right, then we stopped off at a garage sale and I picked up this box of eight scalloped red charger plates for six bucks. Uh, I love charger plates. I talked about them in a prior video. Uh, these are new. They have not been taken out of the paper at all. Uh, so I love things, by the way, that are scalloped. I love saying the word scalloped. <laughs> Just a fun word. I have them listed for 50 bucks, as you can see. All right. So we're at another garage sale. And we're going to move from French to Spanish. Hello, mamacita. Now, I was going to buy this one, but I passed it up because... It was just too long and ceramic, and for what I'd be able to get out of it, it just wasn't worth the time I'd have to put into it. So always factor that in, no matter how visually appealing something is. Uh, but this one was visually appealing and light because it's made out of paper mache. As you could see on the bottom there, too, it's signed by the artist and dated. It even says Mexico on there, which is uh, where they got it from. I talked to the owners. A lot of people expressed interest in this, seeing it in my live shows. So I'll probably list it soon. You could see there. I got it for just two bucks. Uh, then I also picked up this uh, ceramic uh, dip and chip uh, bowl. It's hand painted. Uh, looks really nice. Was obtained in Mexico. So you're just not going to find something like that around here. The dogs were checking everything out and uh, they gave me approval to buy it for just $5. When I saw that it perfectly fit a Mountain Dew in it, that sealed the deal. And so now I have it listed in my store for $69.99. All right, now wait to see what happened at this garage sale. Started off with this silky Baltimore Orioles shirt by TX3. It gives it a nice, cool feel to it. Just felt cool in my hands. Uh, picked it up, and it comps for right around $15. I'll show you the total price for everything a little later. Uh, then I saw some 
uh, bins towards the back and boxes with all sorts of books. Now, this one mostly had a big lot of boxcar children books. So I couldn't believe it because those comp really well. Uh, and this is not a single instance of it selling well. Like, just look it up. You'll see lots of boxcar children books sell for well over $100, sometimes over $200. Then there were some Dr. Seuss books that had some uh, writing inside of it. Uh, I picked up all of the books over here that were Rainbow Magic ones. Uh, these also do really well. And, and just look how many of them there are. I mean, it's just book after book after book. So I started pulling some out and just doing some spot checks inside of it because I just wanted to make sure that there was not any writing on the actual pages. Uh, there were some, you know, loose pages inside that had writing on them, but they were not part of the actual book. So as you can see there, uh, checked out fine. And look, you know, comps are, are very good on Rainbow Magic books if you ever see them. So I wound up, as you can see here, this is now everything I put into my box. Got all these books, the Boxcar Children books, the Rainbow Magic uh, books, uh, I got the Baltimore Orioles shirt, and then I got all of these uh, Halloween fabric ones. Now, I made this lot of Halloween fabric a priority to list. There's five of them uh, because it's Halloween season around the time that I'm making this video. So I do have those listed right now in my eBay store for $42.50. But how much did I pay for everything there? You got it. Just $17. I could not believe it. All right, so here we are at the next garage sale. This is one of these days where everything was going right for Mrs. Primetime, and I would just sort of like pinch ourselves. Uh, we got to the sale. I saw this box of books, and I came across Rollins' Ancient History. Now, this book comes from the 1800s. There are ones from the 1700s where if you have the whole set, it sells for $1,500. The closest I could find for one book that was close to the one I had was $35 for one. But when I found out he wanted $5 for all of the books, I just knew it was going to be a great deal. So there I saw volume two. He also had volume three. There's supposed to be a volume four, but I didn't have it. So I haven't even checked all the other books out yet. I just knew it was an amazing deal. Saw a Pokemon pin in there. I was always check the sides of the boxes. So that came along with the deal as well. And I also grabbed uh, some free Scooby-Doo stickers and a spider to try and scare my son at the dinner table with. But unfortunately, that didn't work. Let's take a look at what Mrs. Primetime found. Look there, a bunch of vintage bookmarks from the 1980s and the 1990s. If you're not sourcing bookmarks, you definitely should, especially the vintage ones. They sell really well. For example, the Garfield one sold for $10. She has multiples of them, so all she has to do is hit sell similar, and then the next one is listed. This kitten one sold for $15.99. Again, she has multiples of them. She was really excited to find this Beverly Hills 902101. Look there, a little Vanna White presentation for Mrs. PT sold for $29. Thanks, Nadia Taylor, for the purchase. Now, I wanted her to present some more, but she got a little camera shy, so I'll do it and just pretend it's Mrs. Primetime. So the context here is this is towards the end of the sale. Now, the price that they had originally on these trains was five bucks a train. Now, I wanted to try to make a deal. So I just started going through all of the boxes and picking out the best trains. So you could see me going over here, for example, and just picking up trains that had intact wheels, intact shells. And, you know, if there was anything in which the wheels had fallen off or if it was just, uh, 
you know, a shell with wires coming out of it, then I just left those uh, behind or anything that had like blatant damage to it. So when I went to check out, I had a total of 15 trains and she said, well, that originally would have cost $75. She goes, how about 60 bucks? And I said, well, I can't do 60 bucks. She said, well, what could you do? I said, I could do 30 bucks. She said, deal. All right, now let's take a look upstairs and see if we could find any hidden treasures. Now we're going to walk up to this room on the right, and this is where the thumbnail comes from for this video. He missed it. What did he miss? What's he looking at right there? Well, let's take a look at that box that he just walked away from. And I am going to simulate for you here how most people will look through a box like this. So this type of surface skimming and thumbing through is very common. And when you look at it from this top-down perspective, a lot of it just doesn't look like it has any value. Now, that orange book is a keyboard instruction book. And you have to look them up by model number. That particular one isn't uh, valuable. So you go through and look and you keep thumbing and it just doesn't look like there's anything there. So a lot of people will just walk away from this and assume there's no value. But here is the key tip. I talked about this once a long time ago. You have got to pull out these manila file folders because this is where a lot of the treasures hide. Now, this is the first page I opened to, but let's reopen it to show you what is actually the very first page in there, which is also instructive because this first page just looks boring. It's just some random page that was thrown on top of there. But as you keep taking out the pieces one by one, what you start to notice is that you have some nice vintage sheet music here. So some of this stuff goes back to the early 1900s, like this piece here goes back to 1917. And as you keep looking through it, you're going to see some really amazing titles here. Here's American Lullaby. Wait till you see some of the other uh, items that I found and some of the things that uh, they wind up being paired with a little later on and also what the total price was that I got all this for. So keep going through it, keep going through it. And here you see Madam Butterfly. Now, keep that one in mind for a little bit later on, and you'll see why. So this one here, again, another uh, early 1900s piece. And also, nice bright colors. It, none of this stuff is significantly damaged because it was protected well inside of this manila folder. And a lot of people would keep things in these folders for protective purposes. So I added that one to my box and then I went and grabbed the second one. And when I opened this one, I was like, oh my goodness, because what's in this folder is even better. Now up top, there was a little clue because it said operetta in it, but check this out. If you love The King and I, that is an amazing showpiece. People love to display these things. I mean, yeah, they like to, some people like to play the sheet music that's actually in there, uh, but a lot of people just love the visuals on the cover. Uh, so that was a great one there, uh, 1950s piece. So uh, flip that one over, and let's see what else we got. And here's another classic title. So now we've got Oklahoma. We've got My Hero. We've got The Desert Song. Uh, so uh, just so many great things. This is perfect for Christmas time, Winter Wonderland. And look at the nice bright colors on that one. So we've got some holiday-themed one. We've got Easter Parade. Uh, Indian Love Call. Uh, I love this one. It's probably my favorite one, South Pacific. So some nice military theme one. Of course, it's a famous movie, South Pacific. has a great score to it. Uh, there's another one, Star Dance Without a Song. Uh, one Alone. There's just so many good ones here. This one is another one of my favorites, a State Fair one. I love the imagery on that. Showboat, that's another classic one. There's a famous uh, hotel from Atlantic City uh, called Showboat. Um, also, this one here, White Christmas, uh, Bing Crosby, Toyland. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. There's so many uh, great titles. So don't pass up sheet music. Sheet music has a lot of value either in lots and sometimes in individual pieces. I do well with them uh, when I sell them online, uh, sometimes individually. 
Uh, you know, for some more common pieces, you get like 10 to 15 bucks out of them. I'll show you some more comps in a minute, but this is also important because some manila file folders do truly have junk in it. And that's what most people assume is in all file folders. But look here, you know, you could sell a lot, for example, for hundreds of bucks, or you could sell uh, some individual pieces for hundreds of bucks. It just depends. All right, look here, a box of records, and we've got South Pacific. This is awesome because now I could pair it with that sheet music I found that it adds much more value as opposed to if I just had the record alone. Now, what is that noise? Oh, no. Woohoo! prime time. Why don't you flip me over with those big hands of yours <laughs> oh my gosh are you serious all right all right fine i'll flip it over real fast with just one hand all right now let's let's move on to see what else prime time you shouldn't have done that you're playing hard to get listen you could keep her guy on the record i've got some other things to go through like this gilbert and sullivan record here so <laughs> Uh, while you two are entertaining yourself back there, uh, I decided to pick this one up. It's the Pirates of Penzance. It's not something that sells for a ton, but, you know, comps are around like, you know, 18 bucks with the shipping. Uh, then I also found uh, Madame Butterfly. So if you remember this from earlier, this is something I could also pair with the sheet music. Yes, I do open the records to make sure there's no damage inside. This is an actual emoji text that I received from Mrs. Primetime when I was there. So she was getting hangry. I had to get out of there. On the way out, I grabbed this kiss the cook sign for just a few bucks. It's vintage. It has some dust cobwebs on it. It looks like it's made out of stained glass, but it's not. It's made of multicolored foil. I have it listed in my eBay store for $42.50. So I got everything there for $36. I just paid $1 for all this sheet music. Amazing. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you consider joining the channel as a member. You know, what looks like just a 15, 20 minute product actually takes hours to edit to put together. So I do appreciate everyone who supports the channel in all the various ways. Membership's just another fun way to do it. Uh, there's different tiers available with different perks available at each tier. And at the most basic tier, uh, you will get customized uh, fun emojis that are specific to my channel and you can check them all out ahead of time. Uh, you get badges associated with your uh, user ID and it's uh, something that changes depending on how long you've been a member of the channel. Also, I will promote uh, your eBay store or wherever it is that you sell or your user account if you don't have a store in one of these videos. I'll link to it in the description section and in the comment section like Jesse Shops. Jesse Shops has been with me from the beginning basically i've mentioned her in so many videos please check out her store she sells all sorts of cool crafty items that she makes and puts together herself like this cool shark and the the lady in there she sent me a couple of these uh and you got the little sequins in there she's so creative and she's been an inspiration for uh mrs primetime uh for sure and she's always uh, putting a smile on someone's face. So you could also check her out on YouTube. She's got a great YouTube channel as well. I'm gonna link to that as well uh, in the description section. So thank you, uh, all of you, for all of your support and being a part of the Primetime family. I look forward to seeing you at the next video. I've got a couple other live shows coming on this week. Uh, don't forget, we got the Thrift Battle coming up Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm gonna have a live show with Don the Auction Professor Friday night. So I'll see you all at the next one, everyone. Take care.